What's up party people, it's review time. This is my 2003 Mazda Protege 5, the final year of the Protege and the best iteration. Man, they don't make them like they used to. In fact, they don't really make wagons anymore at all, at least in America. So I'm getting tired of car companies not making cool stuff anymore. Wagons need to make a comeback. But yes, this is my baby, it's my daily, and I've wanted one for a while. And I got this for $800 and I'm very proud of her. And I've done some work, obviously, because $800, of course, the engine's not perfect. And yeah, I painted the wheels because I thought gold and white would look good. Or bronze, it's like a combination. Yeah, it's great looking cars, underrated as heck. It's kind of the theme of my channel. Everything's underrated as hell that I buy. These are beautiful, great proportions. Not too long, not too short. And the hatchback, which gives it excellent usability. Speaking of the back, great 2000s style. Look at the taillights with the clear circles inside the red casing. You just don't see that anymore. And this thing has a rear wiper factory. You don't, like, these are cheap cars. I can't believe it came with that feature. And it still works, obviously. These are pretty reliable for what they are, even though Ford owned them at the time. And yeah, let's open her up. Look at all the space, man. You even have the cargo cover. This is I'm not reliable. This is broken. Someone cut that. But it still holds up. Yeah, look at all the space back here. Built-in cup holders. I took the uh, the felt lining cardboard piece out because no, no need for that. Weight reduction. You know me, baby. No spare tire either. That thing was junk. And yeah, look at all the space we have. It's like built-in holders for stuff. So yeah, I can put my tools, clothes, anything back here. So much space. Oh, and a little built-in light that still works. Never even used it, but look at that. It still works after all these years. That's definitely original. And look at the hatch spoiler. These things were sporty looking stock. These things look great for their time. Look at the one piece headlights, still shiny as hell. And fog lights, big old fog lights built in to give it the rally look double grills so you can cook a bunch of burgers on those grills great looking front end and these aren't great looking but you know they had to be on there for regulations i'm sure so yeah lots of lighting these just hold up compared to a lot of 20 year old cars all right guys i'm not gonna lie the interior is pretty boring and basic lame as hell but they had to cheap out somewhere It does have power mirrors and all power windows. But then a weird thing is, there's only one lock and unlock button in the whole car. The passenger side does not have it. So this controls everything. And of course this car didn't come with a key fob. None of the cars I keep ever have key fobs. And the one I bought, of course, didn't link up. So I'm stuck doing this and this every time and then using the key putting it in the hole to unlock the car. Just old school as hell. And actually, the speakers are really good in this car. That's another good stock thing about this car. The speakers, you know, since it was a sporty car, they wanted to sell this to like, I guess, kids at the time. So they put good speakers in here. And I can, I can attest because I wired this crappy Walmart, you know, stereo in myself. And even this sounds good. So imagine a really good stereo, like, yeah, great speakers, surprisingly. It also gets a weird coin holder with no door. It's just an open hole like that, that comes stock. They got the dimmer for the gauges and the fog lights. Basic 2000s climate vents. You get four of them. I mean, look how basic it is. Like even these look old for 2003. That, that's it, climate controls and aftermarket stereo. And fake carbon fiber, if y'all are into that. I know I'm not, but I guess it looks better than wood. Like every car back in the day, you get a 420 tray, outlet, cup holders that are actually pretty good, just a little far back, so if it's really tall, it might not fit, but solid cup holders. And the shifter, weird, just, you know, jigsaw shifter, but the shifter itself just looks kind of funny. I don't know if this is how all of them are. You could also get these in manuals, of course. They were very popular at the time. But of course I got the automatic because I live in a city. I'm not trying to shift, you know, all the time. I'm all good. 
but it's very basic there's not even a low gear or first gear it's just that's it that's all you get no sport mode either you get manual mode though for some reason and it still works but i never use it i do get a glove box oh we unlocked a hidden area what could it contain the seats are pretty cool they have that 2000s like public transit bus print i feel like portland buses had this back in the day but here they are, still in my Mazda 20 years later. It's not an e-brake, it's a G-brake, because only G's use these. All right, for real, here's the best part of the interior. This steering wheel still looks great 20 years later. Mazda's steering wheels at the time, they looked great for 2003. Like, they still look good now. If they had volume buttons, perfect. But they don't. They only have cruise control. That is broken, because cruise control always breaks, it seems like, on old cars. But just great feeling steering wheel. I didn't even need to put a cover on this. It just looks that good stock. Like my Toyota from this era is like a big pillow. It's ugly compared to this. This is sleek for the time. It still looks modern. So I'm very happy with these steering wheels. And the white gauges, the 2000s sport gauges. Now a lot of brands did these at the time and they'll never make a comeback, that's for sure. This is the most 2000s thing in here. But Mazda did them fine. I think they're clean and they have the digital readouts which is nice and yeah as you can see 213,000 miles I got this at 210 so I've already put 3k on this baby and no check engine light good on gas 25 miles a gallon about and this thing can feel quick if you rev it out but it's definitely not a fast car 130 horsepower and 135 twerks let's go look at the engine all right, here she is, two liter, dual overhead cam, little engine, little four banger, but it revs out, it's, uh, it's solid, it, they're reliable, even though Ford, I'm sure Ford had something to do with this at the time, because they owned Mazda. Now everything I've done so far in these 3,000 miles was I changed the coolant, I changed the power steering fluid, oil change, belts, air filter, I changed the battery terminal because that was crusty. Oh, and I changed this coolant hose right here because it busted while driving. But it was old, okay? All of this stuff was cheap and not necessarily the car's fault. It was more of the previous owner's faults for not, you know, fixing this stuff sooner. Oh, also it had bad fuses. Someone put the wrong fuse in a spot, which blew out the rear lights. So I had to put in new fuses, but you know, that's like a couple bucks. Just a bunch of tiny problems that I fixed quickly. Timing belt was done in 2020, so I'm not worried about that because these do have belts and everyone hates belts. I hate timing belts so much. Even though she's slow, I love her so much. I hope this thing never blows up. And if it does, it's gonna be a sad day. I might have to do an engine swap because this body style is perfect to me. There's not many better looking cheap cars. Thanks for watching, guys. If you see one of these in your area, and it's cheap, you should buy it. These cars are amazing.